In 1980, the Georgia Craft Co., a paper mill machinery business in Jasper, Georgia, sent a team of loggers on a routine job to cut down trees for paper pulp. However, their ordinary workday took an unexpected turn when they encountered an exceptionally light and hollow tree. This incident would prove to be far from routine for the loggers. In 1980, a group of loggers ventured into a nearby forest to carry out their regular tree-cutting duties. Little did they know, an extraordinary surprise awaited them inside one of the trees. Among the various tree species in the forest, they stumbled upon an American chestnut tree. These trees were known for their rapid growth, nearly four times faster than oak, which made them highly sought after by loggers in the early 20th century. Unfortunately, a fungal blight devastated the American chestnut population, leaving only a few remaining specimens scattered across Nova Scotia, New Hampshire, Alabama, Georgia, and Tennessee. The chestnut wood was favored by builders for its distinct grain pattern, light color, and exceptional resistance to rot. Chestnut trees possessed several intriguing characteristics, and it was one of these traits that left the loggers from the Georgia Craft Company completely astonished. After marking the trees they intended to fell, the loggers began their work. Anticipating a day filled with felling chestnut trees, the loggers embarked on their task, expecting a regular day's work. However, as soon as the first axe struck a specific tree, they immediately noticed something unusual, it was hollow. Although a hollow tree was not ideal for converting into lumber, the loggers were aware that the hollow chestnut tree could still yield exceptionally high-quality pulp. With this knowledge in mind, they continued chopping, oblivious to the hidden surprise concealed within. After successfully bringing the tree down, the loggers began preparing it for transport by cutting it into manageable logs. But as they approached the supposedly hollowed-out trunk, they were taken aback by what they discovered. Contrary to their expectations, the trunk was filled with something, obstructing the passage of light. Intrigued, yet apprehensive, the loggers cautiously moved closer to investigate, only to recoil in shock and fear. Inside the hollow trunk, they encountered a peculiar and snarling creature, staring directly at them. The enigmatic creature possessed elongated snouts and sharp canine teeth, with its front paws positioned near the top of the tree trunk. Its appearance resembled that of a dog, albeit frozen in a distorted form. Puzzled by its presence within the tree trunk and the peculiarities of its appearance, the loggers found themselves at a crossroads, needing to make a swift decision while carrying out their responsibilities. Recognizing the financial value of the log, they concluded that preserving this intriguing discovery outweighed the cost of cutting it up. Thus, they carefully set it aside, hoping to delve into the origins of the dog-like creature hidden within the trunk at a later time. Eventually, the tree found its way to its appropriate destination. Approximately a year after the remarkable find, Southern Forest World, a museum dedicated to the forestry industry in the southeastern United States, opened its doors in Waycross, Georgia, located about 300 miles away. In 1981, the Georgia Craft Company recognized that Southern Forest World was the ideal home for their peculiar discovery. Prior to the grand opening of the museum, the staff examined the tree trunk, fully aware that it would become a popular exhibit. However, their curiosity also led them to unravel the enigma surrounding the dog-like creature trapped within the log. Determined to solve the mystery, they assembled a team of experts who embarked on a quest to uncover the truth behind the strange chestnut tree. The experts began their investigation by closely examining the preserved dog-like specimen, aiming to understand how it could have naturally mummified, as it appeared to be. One of the experts involved was Christina Kilgrove, a biological anthropologist from the University of West Florida, whose area of expertise included the analysis of tissue decay and the role of microbes in the decomposition process. Typically, after death, microbes promptly begin consuming the tissue, reproducing and eventually transforming the body into a petrified state. However, within the chestnut tree, something seemed to prevent this natural decay process. The presence of tannin in the chestnut tree, known for its rot-resistant properties, played a significant role in hindering the decay process by absorbing moisture and preventing the growth of microbes. Additionally, the tree's structure acted as a natural mechanism to deter animals from detecting the scent of the deceased dog. 
The trunk, resembling a chimney, directed the odor upwards, making it unlikely for nearby scavengers to detect the hidden dog within the tree. This explanation shed light on how the dog had become naturally mummified. However, for Bertha Sue Dixon, the director of Southern Forest World, an essential question remained unanswered, how did the dog find its way into the tree trunk in the first place? The dog discovered inside the tree trunk is believed to have been a hunting dog. Experts speculate that the dog, around four years old, likely chased a raccoon or squirrel into the tree sometime around 1960. It managed to climb approximately 28 feet before becoming trapped, ultimately succumbing to starvation. The mummified dog, prominently displayed in Southern Forest World Central Rotunda, has become one of the museum's most popular attractions. It has been featured on promotional materials and postcards for many years. However, it wasn't until 2002 that the famous dog received a name. Previously known as, Mummified Dog, the museum hosted a naming contest, receiving suggestions like Chipper and Dogwood. Eventually, the museum team settled on the name, Stucky. If you ever find yourself in southern Georgia, make sure to visit Waycross and witness the intriguing sight of Stucky, the mummified dog trapped in the chestnut log. Thank you for watching this captivating story. Please select one of the two videos on your screen for another remarkable tale. Like many children, Finn Nuts Den, a toddler, had a favorite toy that provided him comfort and security as he drifted off to sleep. However, there was a time when Finn seemed to require nothing in particular to feel at ease during bedtime. Initially, his parents faced challenges in getting him to sleep in his own bed, as they would discover him on the floor each morning. Concerned about the situation, they decided to set up a camera to investigate further. To their astonishment, they uncovered a surprising change in Finn's sleep routine. Finn was an ordinary child in many respects. He attended daycare, enjoyed outdoor play, and had a fondness for building structures with wooden blocks. However, Finn exhibited shyness and tended to keep to himself, even though he was intelligent and well-liked. His difficulty in engaging with other children affected his home life as well. Over the past few months, Finn had been struggling to fall asleep. Initially, his parents allowed him to sleep between them in their bed, but now he was gradually adjusting to sleeping in his own room once again. It was during this time that something incredibly peculiar occurred, altering the course of events. Brutus, the boxer, played a pivotal role in the events that unfolded. He had become a part of the family even before Finn was born. On a particular Sunday, the family embarked on a three-hour drive to a farm located west of their hometown. Finn's three older siblings, although not fully grasping the situation, couldn't contain their excitement. Two of them eagerly pressed their heels into the car seat, hoping to catch a glimpse of the unfamiliar surroundings. The landscape was adorned with an abundance of trees, a stark contrast to their usual neighborhood. The ambience was noticeably quieter as well. As the car turned onto a dirt road, the anticipation in the children began to mix with nervousness. They could hear peculiar noises emanating from outside the car, sounds they were not accustomed to. They speculated whether they might be animal sounds but couldn't be certain. The car eventually came to a stop, and their father opened the back door, encouraging them to step out. Observing their children's uncertainty, he reassured them softly, trying to alleviate their fears. Come on, kids, don't worry. There's nothing to be scared of, he said. Once the little ones had stretched their legs after the long ride and felt the touch of grass beneath their feet. Surrounded by seven dogs, the children became aware that the unfamiliar sounds they had heard earlier were the collective barking of the canine companions. All seven dogs enthusiastically showered them with licks and rubs, creating an atmosphere of joyful chaos. The parents took the opportunity to explain to their children that they would be taking one of these dogs home with them, and it was up to the kids to decide which one. After engaging in playful antics and bonding with the dogs, the moment to choose arrived. Making the decision was surprisingly easy. Among the pack, there was one dog who stood out. Unlike the others, he would stay close to the children's side instead of joining in with the rest. 
The owner informed the family that this particular dog was somewhat of an outcast, not fitting in well with his canine family and having been overlooked by previous potential buyers. He displayed a more reserved and less playful nature. However, the pup seemed to recognize something special in this particular family. Convinced that this dog was the perfect choice, the family joyfully packed back into the car. On the journey home, both the kids and their newfound furry friend dozed off in the back seat, content in their companionship. Little did they know the profound impact this dog would have on their lives. Upon Finn's arrival home from the hospital, the parents initially had reservations about allowing the large dog, Brutus, near the baby. However, witnessing how gentle and caring Brutus was with Finn, they couldn't help but acknowledge the special bond forming between them. Despite their initial concerns, it seemed as though Brutus instinctively understood that Finn had a serious heart condition, as he diligently watched over the baby. It was evident that Brutus had taken it upon himself to become Finn's guardian. From the moment Finn came home, a beautiful friendship blossomed between him and Brutus. They became inseparable, spending their days playing together and enjoying each other's company in the backyard. The most challenging part of the day was bidding each other goodnight before bed. As per the household rule, Brutus had to stay downstairs, thanks to a dog-proof fence that the father had installed on the stairs. Meanwhile, Finn slept in the room next to his parents, knowing that his loyal canine companion was nearby. The bond between Finn and Brutus grew stronger with each passing day, providing comfort, protection, and unwavering companionship. After a few months, an unusual phenomenon began to occur. Finn's parents were aware that their son had difficulty sleeping, and for a while, he would occasionally climb back into their bed during the night. However, something changed abruptly. Finn stopped seeking refuge in his parents' bed, but he also refused to sleep in his own bed. Instead, each morning they would find him lying on the floor next to his bed, having brought his pillow and blanket down to create a makeshift bed of his own. Perplexed by this behavior, Finn's father questioned him, asking if there was something wrong with his bed or if he didn't like it anymore. However, Finn provided little insight into the matter, which wasn't entirely surprising, as he wasn't known for sharing many details. In an attempt to address the issue, his parents decided to purchase a new mattress, hoping that a softer sleeping surface would make a difference. Unfortunately, even with the new mattress, Finn ended up on the floor once again the very next night. Considering that Finn might be scared or anxious, his parents allowed him to sleep in their bed, just like he used to when he was younger. However, they noticed that he didn't seem content or happy about going to bed at all. The situation left them puzzled and concerned, unsure of what could be causing Finn's aversion to his own bed. After a restless night of crying, Finn eventually drifted off to sleep. To their surprise, when Finn's parents woke up the next morning, their son was nowhere to be found in their bed. Concerned, they got out of bed and discovered him lying on the floor in his old spot in the bedroom. Finn's father, feeling at a loss, decided to take one last measure. He purchased a baby monitor equipped with night vision and capable of recording up to 24 hours of footage. They decided to wait until morning to review the recorded footage in hopes of finding some answers. Anxious yet hopeful, the couple sat down at their computer the following morning to examine the video. They carefully scrolled through the footage, using 30-second intervals to expedite the process. For a considerable period, there was nothing remarkable captured on camera. Finn could be seen sleeping peacefully in his bed in the adjacent room. However, at around 2 a.m., a shadow entered the frame on the floor. There was something obscured behind the camera, making it difficult to discern. Intrigued, they slowed down the playback and leaned closer to the screen. Suddenly, a nose popped into view, followed by a head, and eventually, a large furry body. The sight unfolding on the screen tugged at their heartstrings, filling them with both curiosity and concern. Brutus, the family's beloved boxer, was the unexpected star of the baby monitor footage. Finn's parents turned away from the screen, shifting their attention to Brutus's bed on the floor. It seemed as though he had been caught in the act. However, there was more to the story. As they continued watching the video, 
they witnessed Brutus finding a cozy spot on the floor beside Finn's bed. Moments later, another shadow appeared in the room, and Finn himself entered the frame. He approached his bed, grabbed his pillow and favorite blanket, and nestled next to his faithful companion. With his little arms wrapped around Brutus, Finn soon drifted off to sleep again. Filled with awe and tenderness, Finn's parents couldn't believe what they were witnessing. They hadn't realized the depth of the bond between their son and Brutus. As they sat there, captivated by the footage, Finn approached the computer screen. With a hint of worry in his voice, he asked if he was in trouble. His mother reassured him, embracing him tightly, and as if on cue, Brutus joined the embrace. The whole family found comfort and solace in each other's arms. As they reflected on the footage, Finn's parents realized that Brutus had been sneaking downstairs by jumping over his doggy gate before anyone else woke up. They couldn't be angry, though. Instead, they were overjoyed that Finn had found a way to sleep peacefully thanks to his special furry friend. They even arranged a new bed for Brutus in Finn's room, ensuring that they could all rest together without any sneaky adventures from Brutus. It was a heartwarming tale that left them in awe. The dog kept digging a grave, and the dirt covered its body, but it was unmoved, like a tireless machine, it just wanted to dig up the damp and dark soil. What it did next broke the hearts of those who saw it. Dogs are one of the most loyal animals on the planet. No matter what happens, they will support you, share you through thick and thin, encourage you in difficult times, and celebrate the good with you. Because humans have a long lifespan and dogs have a short lifespan, when it is necessary to say goodbye, it is usually the owner who bids farewell to the dog and the four-legged friend. Many of us may have experienced this, but we already know that this day will come, so even if we are sad, we can deal with the problems that follow. However, when the owner leaves the dog first, the dogs are at a loss, because it is difficult for them to understand, where is their owner? Why did it suddenly disappear? Like this heartbreaking story below. This story happened in 2019, in Fupin County, Shaanxi Province, China, a 12-year-old dog named Huzi, whose owner has lived in this province all his life. The owner of the dog is an old man affectionately called Grandpa Wu. When Huzi was two years old, Grandpa Wu met Huzi. The old man immediately fell in love with this lively and lovely animal and brought him back home, the two spent ten years of good time together. They are as close as a family, they like to go for walks in the park together, and in the evening, one person and one dog often sit on the sofa and watch TV. In addition, this cute puppy will sleep on the owner's bed every night and never leave, as if acting as a guard on duty, forbidding anyone or anything that wants to hurt Grandpa Wu to approach. Huzi and Grandpa Wu are very close. Even the love between people may not be like Huzi, because Huzi will never get tired of Grandpa Wu, nor will he rebel and want to leave Grandpa Wu's side. The dog was originally born on the street as a stray dog, which is not uncommon anywhere. In every corner of the world, there are countless stray animals every day, and people seem to have become accustomed to these homeless animals. Some people keep pets just to find a companion who can give them love and comfort when they are lonely. Unfortunately, when they get rid of loneliness or start to tire of their pets, they will be irresponsible. Ditch them and let them fend for themselves in the streets. Unfortunately, Huzi is one of them. His mother was a loyal and loving dog who was once raised by his own family, however, when the family moved out he was abandoned as they moved to a new home where no pets were allowed. The poor dog ended up pregnant and did what she could to feed her litter, but sadly one day she was hit by a car and died. Huzi, although it didn't have this name at that time, it quickly became familiar with the roads on the street and how to find food. But not every time there is ready-made food, in order not to starve itself, it must beg some food that can satisfy its hunger from humans. Every time it ventures out onto the street, it tries to get as much attention as possible from passers-by by rolling in the street, yelping, or leaning on their lap, hoping someone can bend over to it and stroke their own little head. At this time, Huzi doesn't know that its behavior will change its whole dog life. In fact, it just wants to survive. This was an ordinary day, and Huzi, as usual, 
went on the road after waking up, looking for food on the street. When it passed a small park, it met Grandpa Wu who was sitting on a nearby bench feeding ducks and bread. Hu Zi approached the old man slowly, hugged his feet, and begged for some bread. Grandpa Wu immediately noticed this new kid, and felt very sad for a moment. Because he was so thin, his hair was full of fleas, he was messy, and he looked very ugly. However, Grandpa Wu did not drive the dog away. He broke off a piece of bread and gently handed the bread over for the dog to eat. Huzi quickly ate up the bread, but this little food could not fill his stomach at all, because he had been hungry for a long time. Seeing that Grandpa Wu didn't seem unhappy, Huzi began to beg for more. After sharing the whole loaf with the dog, Grandpa Wu felt that he couldn't just leave the puppy alone. Instead, he gave the dog a hug and encouraged it to walk home with you. After returning home, Grandpa Wu named the dog Huzi, and officially adopted it as his new pet. Huzi couldn't believe that someone would give him a home, he was happier than ever and the two soon got used to the routine. However, one day ten years later, misfortune came quietly. After ten years of good time together, the old man fell ill and his family tried to get him to the local hospital for treatment but the illness was so severe that no one could stop the passing of life and grandpa passed away. After the death of the old man, Huzi's personality completely changed. The once lively and lovely dog became extremely depressed and even did not eat or drink for three days in a row. Grandpa Wu's daughter was very worried and didn't know how to help the heartbroken dog. She knew that if Huzi stopped eating, it might become seriously ill or even die. The woman didn't know what else to do. She thought for a long time, and finally decided to take Huzi to Grandpa Wu's grave. She hoped that Huzi could understand what happened to the old man. It can only come out of sadness by dealing with its own emotions and overcoming depression. One day, the two came to the cemetery, and the woman took Huzi to her father's grave. At first, Huzi didn't know what was going on, and it started sniffing non-stop, as if trying to figure out what it was. It didn't take long for the clever dog to figure out that this was the resting place of its former owner, and what he did next shocked the woman. After turning around the tomb a few times, Huzi lay on the tomb, motionless, with endless sadness in his eyes, even unconcealable tears. Huzi sat there for a long time, no matter what the woman called it, it refused to leave. After a while, Huzi suddenly stood up, and it began to dig the soil of the grave with its feet, as if it wanted to try to dig out its owner, hoping that he would come back. Unfortunately, this was known to be impossible, and after realizing that digging was useless, Huzi lay back on the grave, and at that moment, Huzi could no longer control his grief and let out a wail of pain, it's like telling your thoughts to the owner on the other side of the tomb, hoping that the owner can come back and take a look at it. The woman was shocked by the dog's behavior, she tried to call the dog to her again, but the dog didn't want to leave, the woman didn't know what else to do, she decided to leave. Huzi waited in front of the grave for several hours with hope. It lay on the grave, as if lying in the arms of Grandpa. Perhaps it hoped to learn the courage to continue living from Grandpa Wu. When the woman came back to pick it up again, Huzi stood up and walked towards her. Although it was very sad, it knew that it could not bring its master back to life. Now it is certain that its master will not come back. It is ready to move on with its own life, and although it will never be as happy as it once was, Huzi can only hold out hope that he will be reunited with his master again when he passes away.